All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study. We're in the book of Isaiah, beginning a new chapter, and actually a new section, but this is Isaiah 24, a spoken word from the Lord. Um, and we'll go into it a little bit later. Hear from the Lord. Everyone just want to hear from the Lord. Sometimes you don't want to hear from the Lord. Amen. <laughs> just uh, be okay without it. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and uh, certainly want to uh, thank God for the opportunity to be here and uh, be able to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord. We just uh, thank you. We thank God for another chance, another moment. Um, and we thank God for those who continue to give to the cause of Christ and the progress of the gospel message. And that we hear through your tithes or offerings or sacrificial givings. Uh, trust God in that. He will, He knows how to make ways out of no way. Amen. Don't you? Wait on yourself, but wait on the Lord. So we thank God for you. Also, we want to continue to pray for those who are on our sick and shut in list. And um, any updates on that list, please let us know. We'd certainly like to hear from you. Um, we want to uh, pray for, continue to pray for Brother Roy Hampton for. Um, for the healing of his wrist and other medical issues he's dealing with, continue to pray for him. Uh, Sister Harry Gray and the family philosopher, Sister Mary Nelson, Rashawn Bray for blessing and healing, Tracy Burke for strength and guidance, Brother John Rucker for protection and healing uh, for an upcoming medical procedure. The uh, Masamino family for the healing of the newborn son, Victor. Uh, so it's um, Joseph and Lisa, I think is the name, parents, but the whole family here in the NICU. The Sperling family for protection and guidance and traveling grace. So the Adderall family and their newborn daughter, Gemma, who's also in NICU. To pray for our staff here of Jim Kennedy and his family, Sister Maria Dwyer and her family, for our ministers, uh, Kenny, uh, Reverend Michael Francis and Reverend uh, Kenny Parker, pray for both of them specifically and their families. Um, Sister Diane Edwards, who I'm not mistaken, I believe she's traveling today on Friday, uh, but getting prepared to travel. Pray for traveling grace for her. Uh, also for all of our other uh, boards and committees, our deacon, uh, deacons, our deaconesses, our board of trustees, our ushers, and uh, so many others who continue to keep us going and moving in God's direction. Also, want to pray for the ministries that come through here and teachers and the church family as a whole. Um, and, uh, pray for our world and our world leaders uh, today and just continue to lift them up. Also, um, keep me in your prayer for wisdom, encouragement, favor, direction, instruction. God's will be done, uh, and uh, for not only this church, but for uh, my kids and grandkids, and everybody and anybody in my family, keep us in prayer. So as we begin today, we'll have our scripture by Brother Jim Kennedy and our prayer by Sister Maria Dwyer. I'm going to read from Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us uh, and cause his face to shine upon us. Mm -hmm. 
that uh, thy way may be known upon the earth, and thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, and let all the people praise thee. And let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people right, righteously, and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God, let the people praise thee. Then I shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, and shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. And blessing be to the hymn and reading of Psalms 67. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us our portion of health and strength. And Lord, we thank you for bringing us right back here to be able to share your word together. Lord, before anything, we ask forgiveness of our sins and we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness. And we just ask for your help to help us forgive those who trespass against us. And Lord, we lift up all those prayer requests to you that pastor mentioned, and we have a few more. And Lord, first, we just want to Thank you and ask blessing upon all of those that are able to be here tonight and those that are watching now and those that will watch later and all of the families that are represented here. And Lord, we just, um, in addition to all those prayer requests that Pastor mentioned and those that we haven't heard yet, uh, prayers for the entire Banks family, uh, for Sister Diane Edwards, Lord, and, and you know those needs, Lord. We may not know exactly what's going on, and I'm asking special prayer for my brother Danny and his wife, Julie, and Lord, they're just asking that prayer warriors lift them up in prayer. And then once again, I, I, I don't know what they're going through, but Lord, they're going through enough to need prayer. And Lord, we don't always know why we go through the things that we go through, but this is why we put our trust in you and you alone, Lord, you are the truth and we know the truth. And we know that no other word apart from yours is going to last till it for eternity and that your word is the same yesterday today and forevermore and lord no matter how hard that enemy tries i know at least for me he's never going to be successful putting doubt in my mind about who you are lord we just thank you help us to stay focused on your word we thank you for this bible study as we begin chapter 24 in isaiah tonight and lord thank you again for just keeping us and helping us when we struggle when we're tempted when we're having sorrow or pain. And Lord, we just pray for those that are in the storm right now, those that are going in, those that are in, and those that are coming out, because no matter who we are, what we believe, or where we are in our relationship with you, Lord, we all stand in the need of prayer. And I just pray for all those in need without judgment towards anyone, Lord, but just with the love of Christ that he has for his children in the world. And Lord, we just ask that you lift them up, Wrap your hedge of protection and light around them, whatever it is that they need, Lord. And we just pray that they continue to lean on you and trust in you, Lord. And we just lift up all these prayers to you, Lord. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. And we lift up all those prayers and, and those that we don't know of, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. And... Uh... Thank you for the scripture and prayer and uh, all that God has done and is doing. Um, we uh, are looking at this 24th chapter it has to do with God's judgment. Mm. That's why a spoken word from the Lord. God says it, and that settles it. Whether you believe it or not, God uh, has already settled it in his heart and in his mind. Well, it was done before. He's all-knowing. He's ever-present. He's ever uh, always with us. And so, and thank God. Yes. Because again, this is a prophecy. This is a warning. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, aren't you glad that God won first? He lets us know. Thank you. From the very beginning. And so, a blessing. Um, <clears throat> So, this is from 24 1 to 27 13. It talks about two cities in contrast endurance through to glory. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes. And so the, um, this particular passage to the central theme is a city destroyed. Um, the ruin, the ruin of a city. And so when we Look at this portion, this first portion. Let's, let's look at verse one. Verse one, man, he's, it's a lot in here. You know what I mean? This is like unbelievable. Uh, verse one in 24 of Isaiah says, behold, right? Uh, can I have your attention? Behold, <laughs> uh, hear ye, hear ye. Yes. Uh, the Lord make it, the Lord make it, the Lord. Make it the earth empty, make it a waste, turn it this upside down, and scatter it abroad the inhabitants thereof. Oh, 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 oh. I see four things right there. He makes it empty. In other words, the earth, some people say it's the land, others say it's the earth. Um, I'm going. Uh, I'll go with what the scripture says. It says the earth. I know that others say the land, uh, but it's kind of, um, we'll see how that unfolds later. Amen. Uh, so uh, God will empty the land. He'll depopulate the, the land. The majority will be destroyed. Men will scatter the earth. We look at Zechariah chapter 13. Just some examples of a God um, Zechariah. At 13, verse 8 and 9. Look at what it says. Zechariah 13, 8 9. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts thereof shall be cut off uh, and die, and a third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. And I will say it is my people and they will say, the Lord is my God. Woo now, wait a minute. God, uh, okay, Philippians 3, 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe that's Philippians 3 11. Now, let's see here. 
Let's get to it. So my remembering. <laughs> Go to the word, should be. Oh. Well, then it is two. Two. Ah, close. Two eleven. I was in the right book. Amen. Right verse. Hallelujah. Wrong chapter, but that makes a big difference. So I'm glad. Philippians 2, 11. At the name of the, it says every knee. Now, the reason I said that is because in Zechariah, he said, uh, it shall come to pass in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left there. I'll bring the third through the fire. Amen. You might have to go through some things. Uh, as, and we'll refine them as silver is refined. God tries you for your better. Silver is refined so that the dross, the impurities can be taken out of it. Gold is tried and refined as to take the impurities out of it. And when it's all said and done, it don't matter who you are, what, what part you're in, mm -hmm. they shall call on my name and I will hear them. Oh. They don't, you're going to call. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's funny how something happens. Yeah. You know, you could be doing, you could be doing all your, whatever, right? What I'm thinking about right now, you'd be playing basketball, jump up, come down wrong. Chris ain't even, oh God. Hey, wait a minute, hold it. <laughs> you said, oh God? This might be somebody who might not even believe in God mm -hmm. or say they don't believe in God. Yeah. But you're going to call on him. Uh, and if you make it through the, through the fire, and if you hold on and you have faith, when you call on him, he'll hear you. <laughs> yes. I'm glad. Um, see, I can worship this. <laughs> but this can't hear me. Hello? 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 <laughs> Didn't say nothing back. Right? Can't hear me. No way. We have to we have to worship the creator. Not his creation. That's where people make mistakes. Especially nowadays, they, they worship the creation yeah. and not the creator. They worship themselves. How many times people think it's them and not God? I love it when um, athletes say, you know, first, I want to thank God, thank my heavenly Father, thank Jesus for allowing me to be able to be here. Uh, especially like boxers, they're good for that. They say, first I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because it could have been could have been me mm -hmm. down there on the deck seeing stars and not getting up before the count of ten. I needing help to get up, but. It was God. It wasn't me. It was an inner strength. They know that there's a strength that comes from God, and there's a strength when God refines you and and and, and uh, gets rid of those impurities. And by faith, you walk by faith and not by sight. When you hold on, uh, the substance of things hoped for. Now, the evidence of things not seen. It's not pessimistic. It's not optimistic. It's hope. Hope is action. Hope has substance. Hope uh, keeps you going. By faith, 
is a thing that lets you know that it's there, but the hope is the thing that's there. So you just have to know, hold on to that hope that God gives you, not the world. The world will leave you hopeless. They'll leave you, uh -oh. okay, we'll get that there. They'll leave you empty, scattered, destroyed. All right, now let's look at um, Jeremiah. Fifty-one, verse two. It says, "And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For the day of trouble they shall be against her round about." <laughs> God said. I'm going to send a fan. I don't know if there's a whirlwind or a hurricane or strong wind. I'm going to just send a fan to blow everything up and away. Just give me a second. Oh, good. It didn't fall further apart. The stuff didn't come out. <laughs> Uh, like me, the Bible is full of stuff. And so, God is able. We have to trust in Him. Don't, again, don't, don't, don't trust Babylon. Babylon at that time was the strongest nation um, in the area at that time. God took a remnant and protected them. In the midst of Babylon, the strong nation, God said, I will send fanners, and they shall fan her and empty her land. Mm. Nahum. Now, y'all, Nahum. <laughs> yeah, a few, a few times we preach in the book of Nahum. Good book. Chapter 2, verse 2. Nahum. That's N A H U N. Nahum. Probably more like Nahum in the Hebrew. But listen, look at what it says. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. Mm. The, 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 for the Lord hath turned away the Excellency of Jacob. Um, I used to love to hear uh, Bethel, uh, Bethel Church in Oakland, singing excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, yeah. how excellent! Is that name in all the earth? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the only one that's excellent. And he deserves our praise. So, again, just an example of how God has the power to destroy. He said it. He'll make waste the land, leaving it void. Amen. The empty land. Now, some people compare this to the Great Tribulation, uh, which, um, you know, I, I'll just 
I go with what the scripture says and where it's at. Uh, at times, it is called, um, you know, they have people who are dispensationalists who believe in different dispensations of time. There are covenant uh, people who believe in covenant theology, dispensation theology, covenant theology, which has to do with all the covenants, like the Adamic covenant, the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, and all these different covenants. They're there, they're in the body. Um, I, uh, the reason I go through the Bible, I, I let the theologians deal with all those facts. Because that's, that's, uh, that'll have you um, confused, but you'll be confused on a higher level. So, you know, <laughs> just go on with what the Bible says. Sometimes uh, biblical theology has to do with placing the scripture right where it's at in the time that it was. And so how does that affect us today? It might or might not, but it's not up, up to us to make that speculation, to make that, you know, God in time will let it unfold. And when it unfolds, then you'll know. Because we know that God has spoken this. So he says that I will make a waste um, this particular land, destroy it. Now, since we're in Nahum, let's look at 10. Nahum chapter 2, verse 10. Still talking about uh, let me see. Yeah. Here's what God does. She is empty and void and waste and the heart melted and the knees smite together. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> the knees smite together. In other words, you got them shaky knees. Shake. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's me. And much pain is in all loins and the faces of them all together blackness. In other words, they are confused as all get out. But he wasted it. that land. He uh, destroys it. Um, Look at what else he says. He says that I didn't put it up there, but because it was the, the key to it, but I, I'll talk about it right now. Here. Um, he will turn, turn it upside down. In other words, he he changes things on the earth. Amen. God changes. And when God changes it, it's changed. He turned it upside down. Um, when we look at um, the 29th chapter of Isaiah, in the 16th verse, Surely, uh, uh. your turning of the things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say, 
of them, of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that it, uh, he had no understanding? I shall the thing framed say of him that framed him. He had no understanding. But when you confuse like that, it's upside down. That's confusion. Hey Amen. That's that's what that's talking about. You turn it upside down. Let's look at uh, Psalms. 146, verse 9. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 146 Psalms, verse 9. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Mm. He got no business being wicked. <laughs> That's upside down. We're supposed to be loving and kind, gentle like the Lord. But you can get it twisted. And then let's look at um, Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason. And certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. They came and messed their world up, turned it upside down. What you thought was security was insecure, what you thought was strength was weakness, what you thought was power, was powerless. <laughs> Amen. It does nothing but con adds confusion um, to your life. And so, and then also, he says in there, he will scatter abroad the inhabitants. So, um, we said men will scatter the earth, you know, waste the land, he'll turn it upside down. But he also, he says in here, that he will scatter abroad the inhabitants. Um, this is kind of what it means to make the earth empty. In other words, people will be killed and some will be scattered. Life and death is in God's hands. And uh, let me say this. Death is not a problem to God. It's a problem to us. For it is appointed once a man could die and then the judgment. Death is not the worst thing that can happen is being judged to an eternal lake of fire where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what the Bible says. That's worse. Because, you know, we live here for a while and, and, and we die. If you are Love the Lord, you go home to be with the Lord. If you don't, um, 
in the Luke 15 chapter, it calls it the lake of the place of torment. Go to that place of torment. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, God will. And so, uh, the divine attack on mankind will include a terrible distorting, twisting of the surface of the earth describes the shocking and astonishing acts of God against the earth and people. I just put the earth there because we're talking about people. We look at uh, Romans 8, uh, chapter verse 22. The eighth chapter of Romans. Verse 22. Here's what it says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And this is when Christ has already come. But, you know, because of sin, these things happen and are happening and God is still in control of the land. He can bless it or he can curse it. Uh, he can be, when I read Malachi 3, which you've heard quite a bit from me, he said, I will rebuke, I will rebuke the devourer. In other words, your grapes that you grow, your vineyards, your crops that you need to live on. I'm going to hold back the locusts, the grasshoppers, the, 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 the destroying winds and floods and, and all those things. I'm going to hold them back. I'm going to hold them back. God holds back curses and releases blessings. Do you understand what that means? <laughs> I'm so glad about that. That is the same God who holds back curses releases blessings. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. He's still in control. Um, now, let's look at verse 2. Now, I know sometimes we don't get the picture when God paints it in the scripture. That's why I take it slow so that we can get the picture. <laughs> it's not some spooky, out of the realm. Uh, you know, listen, people even try to make the Holy Spirit like a spook or spooky. You know, <laughs> Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's not like that at all. He uh, controls. He's the one who speaks joy in our hearts. He's the one who gives us a, a higher vision in higher places. Because there are realms you don't see. The God, the Bible says that he's the creator of things visible and invisible. And there are invisible things that you don't see that's going on around you. Mm, yes. uh, God has been working with me on them. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But there could be something uh, to the effect of uh, the Pharaoh on both sides of the sea. <laughs> wow. Well, I thought he was drowned in the Red Sea. Yeah, but did they carry some of Egypt's systemic mindset over to the land? So the Pharaoh himself might have got drowned in the Red Sea, but his thinking, his 
the way that they were taught, the way that they were trained, the, 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 some of the worship, he, they took with them. They didn't drown in the sea. That uh, Pharaoh thinking didn't drown in the sea. So this is something, this is a taste of something I'm working on. The Pharaoh on both sides of the sea. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Too. I'm already excited. So you heard it here first. Hallelujah. Preachers, don't be trying to steal my stuff. <laughs> That's all right. We all get it from somebody. All right. <laughs> Verse two. And it shall be as with the people. I'm in Isaiah 24, 2. So with the priest, as with the servant, so with the master, as with the maid, so with their mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of a usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Mm. What are you saying? All right, let's talk about this divine punishment. <laughs> I'm loving this because I, you know I, I gotta get it out. I gotta get it out. Uh -oh. So let's talk about this divine punch. <laughs> Will um, Thinking too fast. Um, this divine punishment will affect everyone without respect to a person's social, economic, religious, national, or political status. Do you see that in there? It says, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. Now, what he's talking about is um, this, this, this space. So, <laughs> he's, wow. Um.
All right. Whether considered higher or lower your status, uh, all will feel the painful effect of God's powerful hand when he curses the earth. Amen. Now, not by way of total curse in the earth, but, but let's look at something. Let's look at something that we're dealing with right now. It doesn't matter whether you're a preacher, a pastor, whether you're uh, rich or poor, whether you're uh, a maid or a servant, uh, doesn't matter. And he names those in here. As with the people, so with the priests. The priests were considered higher status. Right? And we do that today. We get preachers of a higher status. Um, I just always say, you know, we all struggle in this life. Uh, don't try to put me up high. Keep me down low. So that way when I fall, I ain't got far to fall. I'm already on the ground. Uh, in your mind, amen. I don't care who it is. I don't care what kind of outfit they wear. They're a person. They deal with life issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about gas prices. Oh boy. Something that's happening around here in this country specifically, and probably the highest ones in California. They always give it the highest because, you know. California is a different nation. We have our own status and we have our own economies and we, you know, any opportunity to raise something up, we do. Um, <laughs> because we pay for the sunlight and the ocean and the nice weather and uh, the birds and all of them. We don't have to deal. Listen, I come from a place where it's seasonal, four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Now, there's a certain time of, uh, uh, let's say, summer that you prepare for fall and winter. People are always preparing, right? And there's a certain time in winter where you begin to prepare for spring and summer. You take stuff down, you move stuff out, you move stuff in, you seal, insulate stuff, you de-insulate stuff because you want the nice weather and the nice stuff coming in in the summertime, unless it's too hot, then you do everything else. But um, always prepare for the next season. Here in California, I, yeah, I have half time, I don't know what season we in. It gets cold outside sometimes, but I would call it winter. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've been through some winters. So here, here's, here's my point. These gas prices affect us all here. Because when gas goes up, you got to pay a high price for gas. No matter who you are, yeah. you can be uh, uh, <laughs> you come around here, you, you, they got a Pope come around here in his Pope mobile, you're going to have to pay California gas prices. <laughs> Amen. Drive a Rolls Royce. Got to pay California gas. Yeah, yeah. Drive a double bucket. You got to pay California gas. Yeah. Now, you go in the store. All of a sudden, you notice food is higher mm -hmm. because gas is high. And, and 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 I'm saying that because it affects all of us in adverse ways. So, um, you know. I love this time of year in California. Oh man, time. when things are growing and springing up. Um, 
there's a where I walk a lot of times, there's this plum tree. <laughs> Who I've been waiting for. It's, it's hitting now, it's hit, but it's hitting so good, stuff is falling on the ground. I hate to see that. <laughs> As I'm like my plums. That is one tree yielding all that fruit. Yeah. Guess what I do when I walk in the store? I get to walk past the plum. <laughs> <laughs> And the plum prices. <laughs> Apples are coming next. I'm just saying. I get excited <laughs> this time of year. I do. Because it's free and it's abundant. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to go to a store to pay the high price because it upsets me to no end. If I pay a high price for something and it don't taste like I need it to taste. Mm -hmm. That affects everybody. You know, all of a sudden, um, I got a, I, I can't remember who it was, but they said, due to gas prices going up, we had to go up on our prices. And I'm like, now, let me say this also. Here's the other thing. If it goes down, <laughs> gas prices go down. I guarantee you, those know, other prices ain't gonna go down. Uh, so anyway, I'm just saying things that affect everybody. COVID, big thing, affect everybody. It affect nations around the world. No matter who you are. I remember, you know, some of the high-profile people who got COVID a couple times. That uh, the guy, the president of Great Britain, or something like that. He he had it twice. Some country over in Europe. Had it twice and finally said enough is enough. I, I got to resign. And, and uh, others who have uh, even died. They couldn't pay their way out of it. They couldn't stay their way out of it. It affected. And I'm just saying, it don't matter. When God, and I'm, I, I, trust me, I did not say that God brought COVID in our world. He allowed it. There's things that God allows. Mm. But I didn't, you know, I'm not going to say, well, God did that. He might have. I just don't have that information like that. Then again, if he if he didn't, then who did? So, because I know the enemy can set up stuff too. Read the book of Job, chapter one, two. You'll see that. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, your status in verse 2 is not going to help you when God's powerful hand moves against, to, against the earth and his people. Nobody can tell you. You got no protection. I think the psalmist wrote, oh, well, whether shall I go? From the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I go up high, he's there. If I go down low, he's there. If I go in the water, he's there. Mm -hmm. If I make my bed in hell, guess what? He's there. Lord have mercy. Jesus. And so we have to um, understand that God is not going to play favorites. He doesn't play favorites when it comes to this thing. And he says, I'm not going to play favorites in here that everyone will on earth will suffer under the effects of his curse. And then, well, verse three is very quickly kind of closes out the twofold judgment. The land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled. And this is why I said a word spoken from the Lord. The Lord has spoken this word. Whoa. The Lord has spoken this word. So he said, be utterly spoiled. My goodness. Um, and so... Uh, then he'll go back kind of through um, the repeating idea of laying to waste, spoiling, 
the earth, um, uh, God deciding, uh, said it would happen. And uh, we know one thing, that uh, when we see these things happen, don't start trying to immediately assume that God uh, necessarily he allows that, but we need to ask, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen? God, where are you at in this? What's your position? I mean, what's the purpose? Is this is this part of the refining of a people who needs to turn back to you? So obviously, they have, that answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've turned away from God, you need to turn back to God. Return unto me and I will return unto you the theme of the Bible. And so, very, very, nobody gets away. When God throws uh, his, uh, he's no respecter of person. Doesn't matter the painful effects of God's powerful hand. Oh, man. It's a wrap. It's a wrap when God does. So we need to trust in God. We need to hold on to God's unchanging hand and, uh, uh, you know, praise him and worship him while you can. Amen. Before it's too late. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for another opportunity to be able to lift up your holy name. We ask, oh God, that you continue to guide us and lead us through this passage of Scripture and help us to glean out of it what we can get. Yes, Lord, you are able. Thank you for holding back the devour of yet releasing blessings. We need you, oh God, every day of our existence. From the time we were brought forth to the time we go back to eternity. In this time period that we're in, show us, oh God, how to be, how to do things your way. And we'll praise and worship you with our very life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. God bless you. And God keep you. Is our prayer.